Here in Oconee County, you'll find cascading waterfalls and hiking trails that will take you right into a mountainside. Follow the sound of the train and you come to Ram Cat Alley in Seneca, where you'll discover some unique and handcrafted gifts. Close by, the storied halls of Clemson University attracts young minds seeking a higher education. And right next to all this southern charm lies Lake Hartwell, which sits on the border between Georgia and South Carolina. Hartwell is an amazing bass fishery, and the Walmart FLW Tour made its second stop of the 2014 season right here. It looks like the it's gonna rain till about noon and then the sun's gonna come out but we got a big big line of thunderstorms coming through still yet this morning everything looks different when it's raining and when you sign up to be a professional angler you've got to be ready to fish under a variety of weather conditions sometimes it's gonna be just plain nasty man it's just bad weather all the way around here bundle up I mean the first thing you got to stay warm and, and you know fortunately I'm layered from head to toe in Sims gear which helps because if you get cold out there, all you think about is being cold and you can't fish. February and March, you never know what the weather's gonna be. Uh, it's snowing one day, seven degrees the next. So you just have to be prepared for that. We got backup socks, jackets, rain bib, we got it all. From a cold day on the first morning of the tournament, Mother Nature added rain in the afternoon. But it was the combination of both on the second morning that really tested the willpower of the anglers. It kind of takes the hustle out of everybody. And like I said, if you can keep that from happening to yourself, you have a lot better chance. And, and bad weather actually kind of falls into my hands. And several guys out here that are tough and uh, just old country folks, just like myself, they said they're going to get out and dig. They're going to try harder. The worse the weather, the harder they try. Jacob Wheeler was among the 175 pros who had to try and put the cold in the back of his mind so he could focus on the task at hand, finding five good bass to bring back at the end of the day. This is the best of the best in, in, in the bass fishing world. And if you're going to go out there and worry about the weather and worry about how cold your hands are, you're not fishing at your true potential. So you have to put that all in the back of your mind and get out there and, and fish hard and just try to stay warm as much as possible. We don't get to choose when we come out and fish. You know, it's you know this tournament's going to happen today. It's going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen Saturday. It's going to happen Sunday, and you know it happens that way every year. So, you know, at every event, you know, in the springtime, we're going to have to deal with weather. Not a big one, but a start. You know, the fish are down under the water. They're not as affected as what you might think. Everybody thinks, well, they're not going to bite. They're going to go out deeper. They're not. They're going to suspend. You're not going to be able to catch them. That's really not the case. You can stay warm and keep your head in the game. There's probably no better conditions than to have some windy, blustery spring days. Sometimes it's really good on lakes like Hartwell because when that wind blows, it creates mud lines. You know, this is a really clear water lake and the fish get real spooky. So they'll move up in the water column when that wind blows because all of a sudden that water that was real clean turns murky from the mud line. 14 pounds, 16 pounds, 19 pounds, 21 pounds, seven ounces. Despite the cold and the rain, the pros on the Walmart FLW Tour found a way to get the bass to bite, and the weights on day one were impressive. With adrenaline keeping them warm, anglers chased after big pre-spawn largemouth, and after the sky cleared at the end of the second day, it became clear that South Carolina's own Casey Ashley was going to take a decent lead into the weekend cut. 15 pounds, 13 ounces, got you up to 34.7 right now and back in first, brother. This is my first top 20, and it feels good, especially after Okeechobee, because I, I sure dig, dug myself a hole down there, so I needed a good event, and there ain't a better place to do it than right here on, on the home lake. What I would do going to a strange lake that I didn't know, I would fish shallow, and I knew that's what these guys were going to do, so I opted to fish deep, uh, number one for the weather, and number two because of pressure. Another reason is the fish, there's not that many fish shallow, and the ones that are there are heavily pressured. Uh, I'm fishing the ones that are just staging to come in, and then when I catch those, there's more to pull right in there with them. So that's, that's what I chose to do this week, and it's, it's worked out for me so far. Good that's that's kind of we need right here. Great. You get him in the bottom for you? I got him. You got him? Yeah. I'm talking about that. Yeah. 
You know, in practice, we, we go, go, go. We try to cover as much water as we can. We get a bite here, we get a bite there. We never know exactly what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. Uh, most of the time, all that unfolds the first day. And it takes, you know, the first hour of the first day kind of it's kind of how the rest of your tournament's going to be. I mean, that, that sets the pace. I've been fishing tournaments with my daddy since I was about 10 years old. And, I mean, he let me run the front, you know, pretty much make all the decisions. And, you know, once I got big enough and could handle the trolling motor, I mean, I've been fishing tournaments for a long time. You just got to put yourself in a position to do well. That's, that, that's my deal, you know. I'm not a runner and gunner. I don't like to, I don't like to crank. I, I'm a... I'm a precise fisherman. I like to fish a jig. Uh, you know, any anytime I got a jig in my hand, I feel confident in what I'm doing. I can't quite do all the math in my head. I don't know how big of a lead I'm going to have. I know I'm going to be in the lead. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I want a big lead. I don't want to have to go out there and, and grind to catch 15 pounds again. I want to. I want to be able to relax and just fish. That's what we're looking for right there, baby. Ten pound lead going into day four. Man, I'm Jack. I can't tell you how excited I am. Let's go out there tomorrow, fish hard. You know, I don't, I don't think I really have to catch them all that great, but I'm pumped up, ready to go. I'll see y'all in the morning. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Straight Talk. Same phones, same networks, half the cost. Experience more at evanroot.com. Minn Kota, anywhere, anytime. Plano, protect your passion. Repel, bite back. And by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Another postcard moment on the Walmart FLW Tour as the first light of day breaks the horizon and the final 10 anglers are prepared for takeoff. Game time now, baby. I feel like if I get about 12 pounds, I'll be... Good to go. It'll be hard for somebody to catch me. Anything more than that, it's a bonus. Lake Hartwell straddles the border between South Carolina and Georgia. With over 56,000 acres of water, it's one of the largest river impoundments in the southeastern United States, which means there are plenty of places to find a bass. I'm just going to run a whole lot of new water. I think everything I've been catching in is, uh, it's fished out. And unless we get some, a new wave of fish pulling up today, which, you know, is a good possibility with it, with it getting up to 70 degrees. A lot of schoolers in the backs of some of these drains, throwing a fish head spin, scrounger, jerk bait. Uh, after that, we're going to run a lot of shallow stuff, uh, a lot of brush, a lot of docks. And actually, there's some standing weeds and stuff uh, in, in some smaller pockets. Uh, we're just going to bounce around a lot. There's spotted bass, there's largemouth mixed in. Most of the time when you can see them on the graph, you could drop down and catch them, but really, they're finicky here. There's a bunch of uh, thread fin shad back here, really small shad, and you can see them busting all around us in here. They school on here on these uh, little thread fin shad. Boy, there's a giant bag of fish in here somewhere. Just gotta feel them out. This brush I'm fishing is like 35 to 40 feet deep, so it, I have to fish it really slow to keep it on the bottom. That's the slip he lives in right there. You just have to make sure you keep bottom contact. I mean, you see I'm, I'm moving my rod a lot, but I'm not necessarily moving my bait. I'm feeling those limbs, a lot of natural brush down there so it doesn't come up real high. When you're fishing deep, you're always moving your bait more than you think you are, so you, you have to be careful and, and not move it too much because you'll get it way up off the bottom. See, I'm just feeding it line. I throw it to the back of the slip. Feeding it line, trying to get it to fall straight down. I watch my line the whole time because there could be one suspended and hits it on the way down. I caught a few like that the first day. I was hoping I could get lucky come in one of these places and maybe catch four or five pounder. It was up, up feeding. But at this point, I'm probably better suited to get back out there where 
where I've been catching them and see what happens. The fact that Anthony is fishing on the final day is a big statement. After being disqualified from the first event of the season, Gagliardi faced a seemingly impossible task, make up the points needed to qualify for the Forest Wood Cup. This year, the cup is being held on Lake Murray in South Carolina, a place he's won before. So Anthony needs to earn as many points as possible from the five remaining events on the schedule in order to have a shot at bass fishing's biggest payday. The rain probably hurt a little bit, you know, just the cold runoff coming into the lake. It dropped the water temperature quite a few degrees. I mean, the cold rain, I mean, you never know what it can do. It's all about to warm up. These fish are starving for sunshine. They love sunshine. They're wanting to spawn, they're wanting to get up around the bank, do their deal, then they go back to their summertime haunts. But it's the bass rut. My favorite time of year to fish. Springtime. What I've learned about Lake Hartwell over the last few years is you have to be patient. There's no question. Every time we come here, it's early in the year. The water's still pretty cold. Uh, fish are a little lethargic still. They're not just absolutely jumping on everything like the herring bite where they're actually on top water and et cetera. Uh, so you have to be really patient. It's cold water. Uh, you're fishing deeper than, than generally that I, than I like to fish, so you got to let it get to the bottom. It lays on the bottom. you got to sit there and shake it, which is really not my style, but it's all about patience. Patience equals top tens, and top tens equal cash, and patience equals money. I catch much anything before 10 o'clock, I'll be a little surprised. Andy Morgan waits patiently. While Clint Davis found the right creek with some active fish, he just needed to get them into his boat. Yesterday, these fish, I guess with it warming up, they'd, they were out on the ends of these things, and yesterday they were up on the back side of them. I broke two big ones off on these cables. I'm gonna try not to do that today. I came to Lake Hartwell thinking that I was gonna be fishing 30 to 40 foot deep, but you know, I, I never got on anything out there. And with the warmer weather before we got here, it really moved a lot of fish up shallow. When the sun gets up, we'll, you know, we'll really, you'll really start seeing a lot of fish up under these docks. It's been extremely slow, been an extreme grind. I've, you know, I've never fished this slow before in my life. It just, you just have to believe where you cast that you're going to get bit there. There's a lot of brush around this dock. They live here. I got a lot of bites here in practice as well. Come on. I was one of them right there. Son of a gun! Probably a big one, because everyone that's come off this dock's been a big one. Shoot! It's funny, down here, you know, we're close to the dam, and uh, water's a little bit colder, but the fish are, they weigh a little bit heavier. They're so gorged on these herring and shad. So if you can get them, you know, compared to up the lake, you'll, they'll actually weigh a little bit more, seems like. Problem is, is, is get one. <laughs> the old saying that cold air temperatures and bluebird skies are not the perfect conditions for catching a bass is proving true for most of our top 10, but not all of them. The only thing about this side of the docks, they're hard to get out. Cause I'm pitching over a crossbar, you know, if this brush pile was in open water. It'd be a lot easier to fish because you just, you know, throw by it and you fish the whole thing in a couple of casts. But... Get off there, get off there. Gosh, it's a good one. Those crossbars, when you catch them, it just eats your line from, you know, 40 feet deep, it just eats your line all the way up. So that rod's finished for today unless you want to change line. Number one. Catching the first one kind of gets the monkey off your back, gets the day going, a little pressure off. The ultimate goal for every angler is to qualify for the Forestwood Cup. And did you know that while close to 1,500 anglers have competed on the FLW Tour over the years, less than 300 have made it to the biggest stage in bass fishing. It's been a grind, you know. It's tough to get bites out here right now fishing. Fishing's not real great. Well, they were biting better when it was cloudy, nasty, rainy, and cold. I mean, there's potential to catch, you know, 20 pounds in this area. There's always that outside chance. This is what I'm gonna do the rest of the day. I'm gonna run a lot of this shallower stuff. I'm gonna fish a lot of docks, a lot of stick up. Just kind of run some pockets, hopefully get some fish maybe up in the sun. 
trying to heat up a little bit just like we're trying to do. When it's the final day of the tournament and you're still trying to figure out where the bass are, it's not a fun place to be. Lake Hartwell is what's known as a blueback herring lake, meaning that's what the bass predominantly feed on. So the plan is usually pretty simple in theory. Find the herring and you find the bass. While most anglers are looking shallow, Casey Ashley has a deep, clear pattern dialed in. Anywhere there's stained water, there's a lot of boats because I run a lot of that stuff in practice. And, you know, I'd pretty much be jumping pockets the whole time with another boat or several boats. So I knew you wasn't going to be able to win, you know, doing that. That's a good one. Big spot. Most of the spots that I catch are on the shaky head. I catch a few on the jig, but I know I need five, so I gotta, right now that's what I'm working on, just trying to get five. I ain't got the net out, I'm just gonna be that. That's a, that's almost a three pounder right there. That's the kind we need right there, baby. Look at the belly on that thing. I'm gonna put a coil ring on it. If we coil this one, we have had an awesome day. Casey is already thinking about the coals, while Ryan Davidson is still looking for his first fish. I'm fishing in areas there's a lot of bait, so those, the only reason those fish are there is because of the bait, so they're there for one reason, to feed. So when you get around them, they're really easy to catch. Uh, when you get in an area that there's fish, You'll catch two or three, you know, just bam, bam. There's quality fish in the areas that I'm fishing. 19 pounds, nine ounces. I had the 19 pound stringer yesterday. I could put myself up there around that mark again. I'm around that, that type of fish. Good one. I mean, he choked that thing. Yes. Number one, baby, two pounder. Ryan finally starts putting his Ranger Live well to use, while Anthony Gagliardi is still in the category of those who haven't caught a keeper. I probably will change it up today. If I'm able to catch a limit, I'll probably get shallow, maybe throw a swim bait, do something a little bit different, and try to get lucky and catch a great big largemouth and make a jump up the leaderboard. But yeah, I'm not gonna, not gonna think about it too much right now. I need to focus on trying to put five in the boat first. They're biting, it's so light right now, but I just felt, I felt a little bit of weight, and instead of waiting to see if it was a fish or not, I went ahead and jerked. Finally get a starter. There's four more of these, and a big one will move on up a little bit. My two and a half pounder. These tournaments are so hard to win. There's some guys that just have a knack. Uh, they're great finishers. I mean, you got uh, Brett Height just won the last tournament at Okeechobee. Brent Ayler, Randall Tharp. You've got a lot of great closers. Larry Nixon. These guys make the cuts and they, cl they close tournaments. It seems like I always run out of fish. I guess it's because I fish by the seat of my pants and I'm bouncing around. I never have that spot that's uh, the deep hole where you go in and catch 16 pounds. And I always say, uh, you know, that guy starts with 16 pounds in a bed with him every morning when he gets up. He's got 16 on you. I'm never that guy. I'm the guy that's at the end of the day, I got four with 10 minutes to go and I catch my fifth one and I get 14 pounds. You know, consistent, but hard to win like that. You don't see nothing, don't feel nothing. The whole reason this is good is because you got a pond in the back there, and then you got a channel that comes in, and it narrows down, and this is where the fish are gonna funnel in. There we go. Got her. Oh, it's a nice one. Oh, baby. Oh, it's barely hooked. <laughs> Number one. Oh, look how fat she is. There we go, number one of the day. We get it started. Just a little male fish, but the big girls are right behind it. I never try to go into a tournament with too much preconceived notions. Even though I know the lake pretty well, it's 
this lake's so big, you can do so much here. Different patterns and, you know, different parts of the lake. I honestly can't believe that the fish are still this deep this time of year. This is not how I had in mind to fish this tournament, I can tell you that. The lake's changed so much in three weeks. It's, I can practice, like when I came here three weeks ago, you could catch them any way you wanted to. You could catch them shallow, on shallow docks, catch them cranking. Uh, there's a lot of schooling activity. And it, it doesn't make very much sense to me because the water temperature was actually colder then than it is now. I'm in this house right now. Number five. That's number five. Nowhere but up now. I really can't believe it's so slow this morning. Come on, Bass. I'm seeing all kinds of fish on the bottom coming down this point. But it's not cooperating yet. Frustrating. You're like, just bite it. Dang, man. I don't know what these crazy fish are doing this morning other than not eating. Day four started out slow for much of the top 10 as chilly temperatures kept the bass sluggish. But Casey Ashley wasn't phased, and he used his local knowledge to build on his lead. Number five. That's number five. Nowhere but up now. It takes a lot of time to fish these places because they're so deep. I mean, you can't you can't blow through there and, and fish fast. You've got to fish slow, stay where they live. It just helps to know that there's one there so you can, you can spend a lot of time in the right place. That's a good one. Yeah, that's going to cool right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah! That's all right, we'll get another. That's about a three pounder we just let off right there. First fish I've lost all week. Here we go, here's another. Another good one. Not as big, but it's a good one. That's how you do it. Lose one, you just catch another. That's a cool. So much for just blasting them all day today, like I thought. I would say I'd, I've caught them all, but heck, I haven't even hardly beat on none of this stuff this week. They're just not ready to eat yet. You come back in a little bit and catch one on every dock, probably. You know, it's funny, the first day, I caught them all deep. All really, you know, offshore, down to 35 feet. The next day, it was like, I couldn't catch one out there, and I caught him shallow around docks. And then yesterday, it was a combination of both. And today, who knows? <laughs> uh, we, we decided to um, give up on that first spot. It seemed like the, the water wasn't warming up fast enough, you know, and here we're fishing uh, channel swings. It's, uh, you got the spawning area in the back, and then you got these channel swings that come in, and uh, we're just, all the fish are kind of backed off from the cold, and they're kind of sitting around this deeper water. I'd rather, rather the water be just a little bit warmer. I actually like to move around a lot. But the way I'm catching these fish, you have to, you can't cover a lot, or I can't cover a lot of water because you have to fish the, the bait so slow itself um, and almost crawl it on the bottom to get them to eat it. Look at there. See that one just sitting there? What is he doing? Man, that's a four pounder. That's wild. I mean, they're back there, they're not eating. Clint Davis has been fishing a killer shallow water bite around docks all week. He's been seeing enough fish to know that they're still there, so he's keeping with his pattern despite the slow start. That's a big one. That's a freaking toad. Come here. Come here. Come here. Get in there. Big as I thought, but we'll take her. Finally, they're biting, goodness gracious. 
You don't get to bite that tough. It's just that the time we're having to catch them is the worst time to be trying to catch them. When the sun's coming out, it's from noon to dark or five o'clock when you got the sun at the highest and it's finally heating the water up. Uh -oh. Little spot. Andy Morgan spent the first part of his morning working the very backs of the creeks and bays. But since landing his first keeper, he thinks that may have been a mistake. There he is. Nobody. Watch yourself. Oh, come on. Hell, I can't even catch him. <laughs> Get between my legs. I believe it was a good move coming out on the main drag. The web-based reality series Circuit Breaker is back for another season at FLWOutdoors.com. This year, Chad Grigsby and JT Kinney are giving the audience an inside look at how the two of them travel the country together and live life to the fullest, all while competing on the Walmart FLW Tour. These seasoned veterans have an opinion on just about everything, including where to find the best burger in America. Didn't I teach you how to do this? Dude. Oh, that's too much. You said open the bottom a little bit. Come on. That's this a little is bit. Your first chicken. All right, perfect. Ah! I know we grill chicken a lot, but you remember when we were at Grand Lake? When we went and got those uh, hamburgers like four times? The hand pressed ones? Oh, dude. In Oklahoma? They were really good. What was the name of that place? It was a little diner right out in front of the ramp. Something awesome burgers. I don't Dude, know. Dude, those cups in the thing are from there. Oh, Remember? American Grill. Bingo. That's right. Salmonella, you want to look at? No. Like, remember the guy would just take a ball of meat and then a just big ball of meat. just smash it. <laughs> Throw it on. Throw it on the grill, but he smash it out, like on the countertop where he was. I don't. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it wasn't clean. No, but that's what more extra flavoring. <laughs> I guess. That's what really makes it good. I remember that. You're talking about that hamburger I pulled in there after the second the second day. I was pretty sure I was gonna make the cut. But I was like in the first flight. I went up there, got went in the diner and got me one of them big old hamburgers and sat there and ate it, watched the way in on my phone. I was like, oh, yep, I think I'm gonna make it. So I paid my tab and drove back down to the ramp <laughs> and got in the meeting. Check out Circuit Breaker online at FLWOutdoors.com. And my favorite one. Wow! Wow! <laughs> I can't take it anymore. It's like spring is here, Bass. I mean, there's even turtles out on these tires. I mean, they're coming out everywhere. See them down there? Spring is here. Springtime in the south usually means chilly mornings, but once the sun gets high in the sky, the water warms and everything starts happening. Yeah, we're sitting here just wasting time. Not a lot going on, not a lot going to go on for us until at least noon. That's really gonna give us a pretty good hill to climb. The man at the top of that hill was Casey Ashley. He made a key decision this week that kept him from relying on the temperature change. My most important decision was to stay deep, you know. The weather has just been fluctuating so much, the fish don't really know what to do. We're gonna fish this dock, and it's kind of the same as the one I started on this morning. It's got a, it's got a ditch running right under it, it's deep water. Right in the middle of the ditch is like 40 feet. And the key thing about this point is on one side of it, you know, you got an underwater point running out to it, and on the back side of it, you got an underwater point, and the ditch runs right through. So the fish can be deep or shallow. They can move, you know, when they get ready to feed, they can pull up on those flat ones. And I mean, it's, it's set up perfect to catch a big fish. There we go. Feels like a good one, oh yeah. I gotta get the net. No, I ain't pulling on the net. That's the one we're looking for right there. Come on, baby, stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Come on, get over here. Yes, sir. 
game over. Game over. That's game over right there, boys. Mm. There was plenty of time left to fish, but Casey was so confident in his lead that he wasn't even worried that the best part of the day still remained for the rest of the top 10. Man, the water's 54 degrees. That is like the warmest I've seen it since I've been here. Just not very many of them up. That's the thing, you gotta run through so much water to get one to bite. Oh yeah. Finally, a freaking largemouth. And an old fat back at that. That's what we've been waiting on all morning right there. Mm-hmm. Got us a little something going here, hopefully. Andy Morgan has made more top tens than any other pro in FLW history. But another pro, Cody Meyer, has a pretty good streak going as well. He's caught a five bass limit in 50 straight tournament days, but today the streak is in jeopardy. He's been drop shouting deep brush, but with the sun out, he's moved towards the docks and started targeting shallower bass. Oh, there's one. It's a nice one. It's about time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Finally. One o'clock. And look what I found. A big old spotted bass. Man. Look at the size of that spot. That's about a four pound spotted bass. I mean, that is just a beautiful fish. Finally. That is the first fish I've caught all day. <laughs> I've, I've been switching up throwing different size rattle traps, throwing a half and three quarter, and I'm throwing it on a MHX rod. Uh, it's their crankbait rod. It's uh, it's really nice. It's the, the whole reason uh, during the beginning of the week I couldn't feel anything with my hands, and the rod was so sensitive that you know I'd get that bite at a full cast and I'd still feel them hit it. It was like they hit it like a worm bite. They hit it so hard. Oh, it's a big one. It's a giant. It's a giant. Oh my God, get in the net, baby. Yeah! Oh my God. Look at that one. I'm waiting for that one all week. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. Boy, I was wondering for a minute. I didn't think I knew what I knew what I was doing. Oh. <sighs> All right, look how fat that thing is. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Kellogg's. From great starts come great things. Mercury Marine, 75 years of marine excellence. Motor Guide, introducing the new XI-5 and Pinpoint GPS. Find, navigate, dominate with Lowrance. Walmart, save money, live better. And by Chevy, brought to you by the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Things are looking up for the home team. That time of day, the witching hour. The bad thing about it is we don't have long to witch. With time running out on the final day of the Walmart FLW Tour on Lake Hartwell, every angler knows that if they're gonna make a run at victory, it's now or never. Caught us two large mouths, so we're ahead of schedule, actually. I had two fish, period, at this time yesterday. So we're hoping we're gonna have a little more heroism out of Lake Hartwell here in just a second. It would take a lot of heroism for Andy Morgan to move up at this point. He's in second place, and although his bite is improving, he faces an almost impossible task of catching the leader. That's game over right there, boys. Casey Ashley started the day with a sizable lead and built on it with a quick flurry of bass in the morning. Got 
us some money. Clint Davis was the closest to catching Ashley when the day started, but his story today has been one of frustration and missed fish. Yeah, baby. Look at that one. Woo! It's been a productive day for Brett Height. He started the day in 10th, but has landed enough fish to secure himself a much better finish. While Height won on Okeechobee this year, the Florida pro John Cox had a terrible event. But he's turned it around this week and is looking to finish in the top five. Oh, it's a nice one. All right. Sucker's up there getting some sun. Beautiful fish. Still got time. And Cody Meyer is still trying to keep his limit streak alive. With two keepers in the well, he's running out of time. But he knows it can happen fast now that the sun is high in the sky. Decided to come over here. There's this little marina, and uh, I'm fishing the, the first major point moving into this marina. You know, my thought behind it is that fish are going to start kind of pulling up under these docks, you know, as the sun gets, uh, gets high. And this is like the perfect stopping place for a bass to stop, you know, so that's why I'm fishing this point right now. There he is. All right, it's never too late, guys. I mean, it's literally, it is literally like 210. That is number three, but hey, we're fishing hard. Nice little largemouth. That's what it's all about. Keep, keep fishing to the last cast. Come on, fish, I know there's one under this dock. Clint Davis has moved to some new water, hoping to leave his frustrations behind. You know, I've never fished this slow before in my life. It just, you just have to believe where you cast that you're going to get bit there. I'm fishing uh, southern facing pockets is, is what I call it. And this time of the year, those are the first ones that warm up. And that's, those are usually the first fish that move up and are the ones that see the most sunlight throughout the day. Good one, good one, good one, stay down! Stay down! God of Marty. Get in there! <laughs> Finally a fish! <laughs> You know how hard we work for this thing today? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Supposed to have five of these. Okay, this is the last cast, man. I'm done. Did all I could do today. We over, we out. Got wolf. To the house we go. After every last cast and before the weigh-in starts, anglers spend time analyzing their day. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever come in early. You know, that last bite that I got, that I call her a five pounder. That pretty much seems to be With it being sunny like this and the water really warming up, uh, I really thought I was going to have a chance of catching them. I saw plenty of fish laying under there. They just wouldn't bite. If I had to go back and change it over again, I, I still would have done the same thing. I felt like I was on the right pattern all day, just a little bit too late. We spent a little too much time in the backs of everything, as far as the backs of those major creeks. That's part of the decision making, and we made a bad one, cost us some time, and time cost you money. And big money was awaiting the hometown hero, who was thoroughly dominant on his home water. Wow! 13 pounds and two ounces, nine pounds and 10 ounces, nine pounds, 13 ounces. Anthony, it moves you to third place. Four days of intense competition through some extreme weather and tough fishing on Lake Hartwell has led to this, the final weigh-in. You get number five is a kicker, a five bass limit for John Cox. 
13 pounds, six ounces moves you to second place with 48 pounds and 14 ounces. On a day when bites were hard to come by, getting a five bass limit was crucial. Cody Meyer had done it for 50 straight tournament days, but the question was, would his streak continue? Number four is a good one. Now listen, you've got, you've got a streak going of five bass limits that goes back to how long? Four years. I've had a limit every single day I've fished. I'm very proud to have it. Let's see number five. Yeah. Oh, man. Four today. With Meyer's incredible limit streak ended, it was time for Andy Morgan to see if he found enough weight during the final hour to surprise everyone and take Casey Ashley out of the hot seat. Right now, he is ranked number one in the world. He just made his 56th FLW top 10, more than any other angler. And he's your reigning angler of the year. You guys welcome Livingston Lure Pro all the way from Dayton, Tennessee, Andy Morgan. You're gonna need a pretty big fish, around maybe a four or five pounder to get it done. Do you have, do you have a kicker in there? Wow! A five bass limit for the reigning angler of the year. Andy Morgan, new leader, 12 pounds and four ounces. That's got you in first place with 53 pounds, 13 ounces of Hartwell Bass, but Casey will have the last left. It's been the Casey Ashley Show every single day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's game over right there, boys. We got local South Carolina boy coming to the stage. You guys welcome Costa Pro, Casey Ashley, looking for his first FLW Tour victory. On day one, he weighed in 21 pounds and seven ounces. Day two, 15 pounds and 13 ounces. Day three, 15 pounds and seven ounces in three days. He has totaled 52 pounds and 11 ounces of Lake Hartwell Bass. Getting it done on this final day, man. You need one pound and two ounces to dethrone the number one angler in the world, Andy Morgan. You have a five bass limit. Here we go, five today for Casey Ashley Worth. 15 pounds, 10 ounces. Your champion is Casey Ashley. Wow! Woo! His first FLW Tour victory in his hometown from Donald, South Carolina. Casey Ashley, $100,000 richer. Where are the Casey Ashley fans? Where are you? Look at this. That is awesome, this is insane, man. man. That is awesome. I started off this season uh, knowing that it's going to be a grind. You know, I'm fishing two tours this year, and we went down to Okeechobee. I hate fishing tournaments that you got to catch 30 pounds to be in contention. I like tough ones, and I, I could not wait to get back here, and uh, it paid off well, I tell you. I got to thank a lot of people, my family and friends. They're all here. I think the whole town of Donald's is here. Let them hear you one more time. This week, when I was going in, I couldn't have told you I would win. It's been a magical thing. Every every move I made was the right one. One more time, you guys give it up for your local boy champion, Casey Ashley. Woo! While the leaderboard shuffled a bit beneath him, Casey maintained a lead every day of this event and got closer to making the Forestwood Cup on Lake Murray in Columbia, South Carolina. For more on the latest news and tips in bass fishing, go to flwoutdoors.com.